Hi, I'm Doug McKinley and you're watching Adorama TV. For this episode, we're going to have a bit of fun by giving some of our images a miniaturizing effect by using some tilt-shift Photoshop magic without actually using a tilt-shift lens, basically faking it. Adorama TV presents Stay Focused with Doug McKinley. In essence, tilt-shift photography manipulates focus and depth of field to yield photos with a selective focus, which can mimic a miniature model, and that's our goal today. I think the best way to illustrate this is to go through a step-by-step -step process using some image samples in Photoshop. Picking an appropriate picture is possibly the most important step. Choosing the right photo will ensure that your final image has maximum effect by starting off on the right foot. Tilt shift photography tends to work best for photos that have a wide view, a relatively large aperture, and are taken from higher ground. The photo doesn't necessarily have to be an aerial shot, but it should be something that is composed of many small parts that make up a whole. You should be able to envision how your photo might be manipulated to look like a miniature even before its Photoshop transformation. For me, I'm using a processed TIFF file that is a little heavy-handed with the clarity. This will help improve the edge sharpness in the final image. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, look at some, doing a bit of tilt shift magic on one of our images. So we're going to do this in Photoshop. I'm using CS4, but pretty much all versions do it. So, so first things first, we're going to find our image. Uh, again, we talked about earlier about um, finding an image shot from above. So the one I'm going to choose is a shot from, from some of the streets in London. And we'll open that up. And it's a, it's a, it's an image that I shot from above near uh, Charing Cross Station. So the first things first is we're going to find the gradient tool. If you can't find it, it's probably hiding behind the paint bucket tool. So just click on the bottom right hand corner, a crunch gradient tool, choose that. On the top of your interface, you'll see five little gray boxes. Make sure you pick the one four across from the left. That's the mirror gradient tool, reflected, sorry, reflected gradient tool. Choose that. Three little boxes further to the right. The transparency other in reverse, that's the way it's set right now, is default. Make sure reverse is not clicked. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick mask of our uh, picture. So you can either do it by pressing Q on your keyboard or the bottom of your toolbox on the left-hand side. You just click that little box at the bottom. And then we're going to start to create our TS effect. Now, this is really hit and miss. You might, it might take you three or four times to get it right. So I want the red umbrella in this picture to stand out a little bit. So I'm going to start my, uh, my, with my gradient tool at the red umbrella halfway along it, and then I'm going to drag it up. So I've got a line going up the frame to about midway through the awning in this image. Don't go all the way to the top. And then you should get a red band across, across your image. That is showing you the, the parts of the image which are going to be sharper. Okay, then turn the, turn the, um, the quick mask off by clicking either pressing Q again or pressing the box. Then you'll see um, sets of marching ants running around the image. Okay, and then from there what we want to do is we want to go to uh, filter, drag down to, to blur, across and down to lens blur. Now this is the uh, interface that comes up and this is what's where we're going to start to adjust how much of this blur we want. Now I can drag this just to show you how it works, I'll drag, we're using the radius slider. If I drag it all the way to the left, it's like there's been nothing added to it. It just looks like the normal picture. If I drag it all the way to the right, it looks really heavy handed and just a bit, well, more than a bit, way too much. So grab your slider, the radius slider, and drag it from 100, start going back toward 50-ish. And it's a real judgment thing. It's a real sort of what you as an individual might like. So I'm at 55 there. I might drag it down just a smidge more, around 50. And once you're happy with that, then click OK. And then the computer will apply the lens blur to the image. Now, how fast this works depends on a couple of things. How big your image is. If it's a really big image, it's going to take some time. And also how quick your computer is. Now, this particular picture is about 7 megabytes. It's a, it's a JPEG file. Um, I don't want to go any bigger than that right now because otherwise I'd be sitting here for half an hour waiting for this lens uh, filter to apply. And it's just about finished. And as it finishes, it's going to open up back into Photoshop 
and you'll still see your marching, marching ants. So just deselect the, the marching ants and your picture's almost ready to go. Now I'm looking at this image and I'm thinking it might benefit from a slight crop at the top and the, and the side and, one of the, and just a little bit at the bottom, maybe a little more at the top there. So I'm going to crop that out a little bit. I'm very close to finishing. Two last things though. I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, and I'm going to bump, bump up the saturation a little bit just to add a little more surrealness to the picture. Now, you can, I wouldn't go too crazy with this, maybe about 15, plus 15-ish. You, you can check how much you've done by just clicking the preview button on and off to the right-hand side. Yeah, it looks good. Press OK. And finally, before saving, I'm going to go back to Image Adjustments, and then down to Curves. I'm going to put a slight S-curve on this. So once that that's, uh, box is open up, the top right-hand corner, grab your line there and just drag it up a little bit. Don't go crazy with it. And to adjust a little bit more punch to the a little more contrast, grab and shadow the uh, bottom box on the left and drag it down a little smidge. This is a real judgment thing. This is completely up to how you might like it. So that's not too bad. Press OK. And once your, once your image is back up, then save it anywhere you want. And that's it. It's a very simple process. So with any luck, your final product is a subject in miniature. This process is relatively easy once you've done it a few times. And with practice and the correct image selection, your miniatures will only improve. Thanks for watching, and I'm Doug McKinley for Adorama TV. Don't forget, you can also subscribe to Adorama TV for more great videos. And tell us what you think. You can like, comment, or share this video, and please stop by the Adorama Learning Center for more great tips and tricks.